Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group so as the students were requesting to provide the pdfs of these sessions so you will be getting the access to those pdfs through the telegram group only so you can join our telegram group the link is in the description below so let's move on to question number one now which says which of the following statements correctly relates to sebi lodr third amendment regulations 2021 so recently these regulations have come up where certain amendments have been made. So let's discuss those amendments first and then we'll come back to the question, okay? So most of these amendments in the LODR regulations are related to the independent directors, their appointment, their definition, then your audit committee, your other committee um, composition when it comes to independent directors. So these amendments are effective from 3rd of August only. So when this uh, these, this set of no regulations come up, came up, since then it has been effective. So let's discuss a bit about those amendments. Okay, so the very first amendment is related to the definition of the independent directors. So um, existing regulation said that who is an independent director who apart from receiving director's remuneration has or had no material pecuniary relationship with the entity. It's not just that they can, they should not have the relationship with the entity, but also the holding, it's, uh, it's a, it might be a holding company or it might be a subsidiary. So in that case also, the uh, director should not receive remuneration, uh, this director other than receiving remuneration should not have any pecuniary relationship with the listed entity, with the holding, subsidiary or associate company or their promoters or directors during two immediately preceding financial years or during the current financial year. All right. Now, what has been the amendment? Wo definition the same rahi ki jo bhi director uh, ki remuneration hai uske alawa uski koi material relationship nahi honi chahiye company ke saath ya uski holding subsidiary ya associate company ke saath but previously it was in the previous two years okay two financial years mein or during current year in relationship nahi honi chahiye ab is two ko bada ke three preceding years kar diya gaya hai okay this is one change second change is that independent director is who he is a non executive director we have already discussed in one of these one of the sessions that who are independent directors, who are non-executive directors, the directors who are not involved in the day-to-day -day working, okay, and uh, in, in, uh, are basically non-executive directors, and that's why we need to have some of those as the independent directors who are not having any other pecuniary relationship with the company, so that they can give an independent, unbiased judgment or decision. So, the independent director means a non-executive director who neither himself nor whose relatives holds a key managerial position or is or has been an employee in the listed entity or its holding subsidiary or promoter group or in the preceding three financial years. So, exemptions have been given to the employees. Okay. So, relative who is an employee but not a key managerial person, this restriction of this very clause is not applicable to that very person. Okay. So, majorly timeline bada di kari hai. Just uh, time period mein wo uski koi or pecuniary relationship nahi honi chahiye other than director's remuneration and employee ko relaxation di gai hai. One who will be considered an independent director is basically the non-executive director who neither himself nor his relative has a key managerial position other than whatever position he is holding. All right. Now, if we move forward, another amendment is with respect to the regularization of director. This uh, regulation, what's not existing, it's a new amendment which has been inserted. Okay. So, uh, sorry, after amendment, this new regulation has been inserted which says, if you have to appoint reappoint, remove independent director, you need a special resolution. Okay, shareholder ka approval chahiye jis ke liye special resolution pass hoga. Agar aapko kisi bhi independent director ko appoint karna hai, reappoint karna hai, remove karna hai. So what's the new regulation as per the amendment? Uh, the new regulation is that the listed entity will require the approval of shareholders for appointment of a person on the board of directors uh, uh, and the Approval for appointment is taken at the next general meeting 
और विद इन अ पीरियड ऑफ थ्री मंथ फ्रॉम द अपॉइंटमेंट विच एवर इज अर्लियर सो ये जो अप्रूवल चाहिए उनकी अपॉइंटमेंट का ये नेक्स्ट जनरल मीटिंग में लिया जा सकता है ये रेजोल्यूशन पास किया जा सकता है और डिसीजन लिया जा सकता है या उस पर्सन के अपॉइंट होने के विद इन थ्री मंथ्स आपको अप्रूवल चाहिए ओके सो दिस इज वॉट दिस न्यू रेगुलेशन सेल्श्योर अप्रूवल ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स फॉर अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ दैट पर्सन ऑन दी बोर्ड इन दैक्स जनरल मीटिंग और विद इन थ्री मंथ्स विच एवर इज अर्लियर ओके नेक्स्ट अमेंडमेंट इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी ऑडिट कमिटी कॉम्पोजिशन सो एक्सिस्टिंग रेगुलेशन सेट दैट टू थर्ड मेंबर्स शुड बी द इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर्स न्यू रेगुलेशन आफ्टर द अमेंडमेंट सेज एटलीस्ट टू थर्ड मेंबर्स शुड बी इंडिपेंडेंट एंड यू कैन हैव इवन मोर एज वेल next amendment is with respect to the nrc that is nomination and remuneration committee so this committee um, a composition has also been modified earlier it used to have 50% of independent director now they need two third of independent directors okay so at least two third independent directors should be there and uh, then amendment in the related party transactions so existing regulation was that all related party transactions should be approved by audit committee and the new amend after amendment the regulation says that yes the related party transactions need to be approved by audit committee and within the audit committee they should be approved by whom by the independent directors so provided that only those members of audit committee who are independent directors should approve these related party transactions all right so if i move ahead now the next amendment is in obligations with respect to independent directors which is with respect to one year cooling period so if a person from is resigning from that very position and again wants to be appointed as a executive or a whole time director then a one year cooling period is needed so the amendment says no independent director who resigns shall be appointed as a executive or whole time director on the board of the listed company or its holding subsidiary associate company okay unless a period of one year has elapsed from his resignation as an independent director okay so this one year cooling period is required then only after resignation he can be reappointed in such kind of a position of whole time or a executive director so these were the amendments which were important as far as this is concerned so if i move back to the question we had to identify the statements which are correct so two third at least two third members in the audit as well as independent uh, director in the nomination as well as audit committee was the requirement as per the amendment so these statements are correct this one is incorrect first one because it says that two preceding years mein uski koi aur relationship nahi hone chahiye other than the salary is withdrawing as independent director so this has been changed to 3 years now okay so this statement is incorrect answer is option d that second and third are correct moving on to question number 2 now which says sebi has decided to ease the post listing lock in period or the lock in norms for both promoters and financial investors okay so the lock in of promoters shareholding to the extent of minimum promoters contribution which is 20% of post issue capital will be required for what time period so you have to identify this new lock in requirement so the answer to this question is option c that 18 months is the new requirement which was earlier 3 years and now has been modified to 18 months and it is only in certain cases so let's discuss about that as well so sebi has relaxed the lock in requirement ab aapko jaise koi shares khareedne hai to usko kuch time tak aapko usme invested rehna hai you cannot move uh, basically transfer them so that is the lock in period that you need to be you need to be holding them for certain time period so the lock in period for promoters share holding of minimum promoters contribution was 3 years and it has been reduced to 18 months for certain cases okay so what's the minimum promoters contribution 20% of post initial, uh, initial public offer so aap jab ipo karte ho to 20% uska jo share holding hai wo प्रोमोटर के पास होनी चाहिए और उन्हें वो तीन साल तक होल्ड करके रखनी होती थी अब उसका टाइम रिड्यूस करके 18 मंथ्स कर दिया गया है ओनली इन दोज केसेस वेयर आई पी ओ इज इंटायरली फॉर ऑफर फॉर सेल ओके पूरा आई पी ओ ऑफर फॉर सेल है या फिर 50 परसेंट ऑफ इशू जो है वो कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर के लिए यूज नहीं किए जा रहे हैं सो इन केसेज में ये 
लॉक इन पीरियड का चेंज एप्लीकेबल होगा इसके अलावा लॉक इन पीरियड फॉर प्री आई पी ओ शेयर होल्डिंग ऑफ नॉन प्रमोटर्स वॉज रिड्यूज फ्रॉम वन ईयर टू सिक्स मंथ सो द नॉन प्रमोटर्स ओके इफ दे आर ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइबिंग टू द शेयर ऑफ द कंपनी ओके बिफोर द आई पी ओ देन दे हैव टू होल्ड इट फॉर वन ईयर नाउ इट हैज बिन रिड्यूज टू होल्डिंग दो शेयर फॉर सिक्स मंथस ओनली Similarly, for venture capital fund, alternative investment fund, where we have category one, category two, we have already discussed about AIF category one, category two in one of the sessions. Okay, you can go and uh, understand what is this category one, two AIF. So they are basically different kind of investments only. Okay, then the foreign venture capital or all these, uh, if are investing in the shares. then they had to hold it for a period of one year now it has been reduced to six months so basically jitne time ke liye aap ipo ko ipo mein shares ko subscribe karte ho ya usse pehle karte ho pehle wo usko hold kar ke rakhne tak ka time zyada tha lock in period zyada tha ab usko reduce kar diya gaya hai why this decision has been taken in a significant move that may benefit new age technology companies and firms backed by financial investors Sebi decided to ease these lock-in norms for both promoters and financial investors. Now, people like to invest, especially in the new age technology companies which are coming up. But if you have a really very um, lengthy uh, lock-in periods for which you have to retain those shares, and if there are new companies, you might not want to rely on such investments and might not want to make such investments. So, this reduction in the lock-in period, आपका ज़्यादा time तक पैसा वहाँ लॉक इन नहीं रहेगा तो आपके पास अब अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं कि थोड़े टाइम के लिए हमें पैसा लॉक इन करना है तो क्यों नहीं हम इन फर्म्स में भी इन्वेस्ट करें सो so, ये कुछ को बूस्ट देगा न्यू एज टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनीज को और राइट सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर दिस द आंसर वॉज एटीन मंथ इज दी न्यू पीरियड विच वॉज अर थ्री ईयर्स इन सर्टन केसेज मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री विच इज दी लास्ट क्वेश्चन विच से एन एम्प्लॉय इज द की ऑफ द सक्सेस ऑफ एवरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन and every employee deserves to be compensated for the efforts made by them to make the organization successful in the competitive market one such method involves issuing the equity shares by the company to the directors or employees at a discount or for consideration other than cash for what for providing their know how value additions and intangibles by right? growth and success of the company you have to identify the concept being talked about so as we all know human resources are the most important resources of any organization they are the ones who are ultimately going to use other resources okay employees bahut important role play karte hain kisi bhi organization mein so it's very important that we compensate them for the efforts made okay obviously we are paying them the salaries the wages which compensate which monetarily compensates them for the work they are doing but some additional uh, uh, compensation should be given uh, to incentivize them to basically um provide them the benefit for the expertise which they are bringing in for the skills knowledge they are bringing in for the contribution they are making to the company to helping it to grow to succeed and uh, uh, establish a goodwill in the market okay then they are doing the value additions to the firm so jo bhi employees apni taraf se time work contribute kar rahe hain jis wajah se company ko aur value addition ho raha hai aur growth success mil rahi hai kyunki employees ki skills uh, technical background unki knowledge ne wo चीज अचीव करने में हेल्प किया है तो हमें उनको इंसेंटिव देने के लिए कुछ करना चाहिए सो so, एक चीज जो कंपनीज करती हैं वो ये है कि वो एम्प्लॉयज को डिस्काउंट पे या फिर कंसेंट्रेशन अतन कैश पे इक्विटी शेयर्स इशू करते हैं सो so, इस मेथड को जो एम्प्लॉय को उनके एफर्ट्स के लिए कंपनसेट करने में हेल्प करेगा आ, क्या कहते हैं द मेथड विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग इज दी स्वेट इक्विटी शेयर सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी लेट्स डिस्कस अ बिट अबाउट दिस so first of all what is sweat equity sweat equity is the non monetary benefit that companies stakeholders give in labor time that benefit the company so jo bhi employee hai wo apna time deta hai company ko wo company ke liye work karta hai efforts put in karta hai apni skills knowledge background uh, ki wajah se wo company ko acche maqam tak pahunchne mein help karta hai growth success mein help karta hai so that contribution from employees end must be 
कंपेंसेटेड इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ सम बेनिफिट सो उसके लिए स्वेट इक्विटी शेयर्स इशू किए जाते हैं फॉर द टाइम एंड एफर्ट्स दैट पर्सन इज पुटिंग इन सो so, इस टाइम एंड एफर्ट को जो नॉन मॉनिटरी बेनिफिट है जो ये एम्प्लॉई एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को दे रहा है इसके रिवॉर्ड में कंपनी उन्हें स्वेट इक्विटी शेयर्स इशू करती है दीज आर दी इक्विटी शेयर्स विच आर इशूड एट डिस्काउंट ऑफ अ कंसिडरेशन अदर देन कैश फॉर वॉट फॉर दी नो हाउ दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग दैट इज जो उनकी स्किल्स हैं नॉलेज है उसके लिए कंपनसेट करने के लिए उन जो वो हमारे कंपनी की सक्सेस ग्रोथ को कंट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं उसकी लिए कंपनसेट करने के लिए या वो कंपनी में जो वैल्यू एडिशन कर रहे हैं उनके आने से जो कंपनी को और बेनिफिट हुआ है उन सब के लिए कंपनसेट करने के लिए कंपनी उन्हें शेयर्स इशू करती है ऑब्वियसली कंपनी प्रोवाइड्स दी बेनिफिट्स टू एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स वेयर इट प्रोवाइड्स दी ऑप्शन टू बाय द कंपनी शेयर्स एट अ डिस्काउंटेड रेट और प्रोवाइड द कंपनी शेयर्स फॉर फ्री बट हेयर इंस्टेड ऑफ शेयर होल्डर्स यू आर कंपनसेटिंग दी एम्प्लॉयज थ्रू इशूइंग ऑफ दी इक्विटी शेयर्स टू देम और राइट so we uh, why are we discussing this because sweat equity norms have come up for new age technology companies where sebi in its meeting has made certain changes okay so sebi has approved the merger of two regulations it already had sweat equity regulations and some share based employee based uh, benefits regulations so it has merged both of these regulations into a single regulation called sebi share based employee benefits and sweat equity resolution uh, regulations so shares issue karne ke form mein jo employees ko benefit diya jata hai sweat equity ke form mein usse related ke regulations hain jisme ek change aaya hai so what's that change the board of sebi has increased the overall limit of sweat equity that can be issued by new age technology companies listed on the innovators growth platform सो इनोवेटर्स ग्रोथ प्लेटफॉर्म में जो कंपनीज जो न्यू एज टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनी लिस्टेड है वो कितना अपना पेड अप कैपिटल को स्वेट इक्विटी के फॉर्म में इशू कर सकती है उसकी जो लिमिट है उसको चेंज किया है सेबी ने सो वॉट्स अ इनोवेटर्स ग्रोथ प्लेटफॉर्म ये एक सेबी रिकोगनाइज प्लेटफॉर्म है ओके इट्स अ प्लेटफॉर्म विच वॉज लॉन्च बाय सेबी एंड इट लिस्ट दो इशूअर्स विच मेक इंटेंसिव यूज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सो जो कंपनीज बहुत ज्यादा टेक्नोलॉजी का यूज करती हैं इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी का डेटा एनालिटिक्स का बायो टेक्नोलॉजी नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी और नई नई टाइप की टेक्नोलॉजीज का यूज करके वो प्रोडक्ट सर्विस या बिजनेस प्लेटफॉर्म इस्टेब्लिश करती हैं उन कंपनीज को ये इनोवेटर्स ग्रोथ प्लेटफॉर्म में लिस्ट किया जाता है और उनको रिकोगनाइज किया जाता है एज ए न्यू एज टेक्नोलॉजी कंपनीज so there was a limit on these companies to issue the sweat equity shares so currently maximum yearly limit was 15% of existing paid up share capital with a overall limit limit not exceeding 25% of the paid up capital at any time so ek saal mein 15% of paid up capital se zyada aap issue nahi kar sakte the sweat equity ye limit thi aur overall jo time period mein aapne issue kiya hai एम्प्लॉज को स्वेट इक्विटी वो ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ पेड ऑफ कैपिटल नहीं एक्सीड करनी चाहिए अब इस ट्वेंटी इस लिमिट को बढ़ा के फिफ्टी परसेंट कर दिया गया तो मैक्सिमम ओवरऑल लिमिट इज फिफ्टी परसेंट सो दिस लिमिट विल बी एप्लीकेबल फॉर टेन ईयर्स फ्रॉम डेट ऑफ कंपनीज इन कॉपरेशन कंपनी जब से इनकॉपरेट है उसके दस साल तक ओवरऑल पेड ऑफ कैपिटल जितनी है उसका मैक्सिमम फिफ्टी परसेंट तक आप स्वेट इक्विटी शेयर इशू कर सकते हो दिस इज दी चेंज विच हैज कम अप ओके so we have already answered this question answer was option b sweat equity shares this was all for today's session i hope the session was useful for you with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much